Hello friends, I hope you guys are doing great this week. I am back with our next art lesson. Um, before we get talking about what we're gonna do this week, I wanted to say a huge thank you to each and every one of you guys. I got so many pictures and emails cards and um, just sweet uh, videos um, for Teacher Appreciation Week and I am so thankful for you guys. Um, it really made my week and I cannot tell you how much I miss you, miss seeing you guys creating in class, but I love seeing everything that you've been doing and it really just warmed my heart and filled my bucket to get all of those emails and videos and pictures from you guys. So thank you so much for making me feel special. Now, let's talk about what we're gonna do this week. So last week, we learned about the artist Romero Brito and his really colorful, patterned, kind of cartoon artwork that he did. And I saw a ton of amazing artworks, both dogs and other animals or other objects turned into Brito inspired artworks and they look fantastic. This week we're actually going to be learning about another art artist. Now some of you may already know a little bit about this artist because I have done projects with him in the past but he is an artist that I really like if nothing else than for his subject matter. So we are going to be learning about the artist Wayne Tebow. And Wayne Tebow is a pop artist of sorts. He does not claim the style of pop art, but a lot of people put him in that category. But one of the really cool things about his artwork is that he creates art um, mainly about sweet treats. He makes lots of cakes and pies and ice cream cones and tons of candy and other yummy desserts. So for our project, we're going to be watching a video giving you a little background information about Wayne Tebow, just like we did with Romero Brito. And then we're going to be drawing our very own cake. So I'm gonna show you guys how to create a piece of cake with a nice huge slice out of it. Um, and then you guys are going to be working on coloring using some value. All right guys, so here comes that video. Today, we're going to talk about the artist Wayne Tebow. Wayne Tebow is an American painter best known for his still life of edible treats and everyday objects. His most popular subject matter includes colorful cakes, slices of pie, candy pieces, and the winding streets of San Francisco. Tebow's paintings capture the American sensibility of everyday life. Still lifes are included in his pieces by the cakes, shoes, and various content that he paints. Wayne Tebow was born in Mesa, Arizona in 1920. He then later moved to Los Angeles in 1921. During this time, he worked as a summer apprentice program in the animation department of Walt Disney Studios. He also served in the Air Force and was assigned to Special Services Department as an artist and cartoonist. Tebow's work displays consumer objects such as pies and cakes and different items you would see at the pharmacy. Wayne Tebow uses heavy pigment and exaggerated colors to depict his subjects. Well-defined shadows characteristic of advertisements are almost always included in his subject matter. Wayne Tebow loved to use repetition and shadows when looking at his pastry and cake art pieces. Wayne Tebow, an American painter, is best known for his still lifes of edible treats and everyday objects. Enjoy these amazing pastry masterpieces. All right, guys, so I hope you got a little bit of um, background information about our artist Wayne Tebow and uh, got a good look at the types of artwork that he does. He tends to use paint very thickly. In fact, um, he paints so thickly that to see one of his artworks in person, it actually looks like he's painted with real icing. It's that thick. 
but we are not going to be using paint unless you want to, of course, but we are going to be making a piece of cake. Now, my artwork that I have kind of made my example looks like this. As you can see, we've used a lot of value in the cake and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Um, I'm gonna walk you through how to create this slice of cake, um, some extras that you can add. I am simply using a piece of white computer paper and crayons and then I chose to use a black Sharpie marker to trace mine. If you have that, great. If you don't, um, you don't have to have an outline. You can just use those crayons um, or you can use a black marker if you want that outline. If you don't have crayons, colored pencils would work. You can use markers, but markers are not going to allow you to get the value. Color pencils and crayons are really going to allow you to give, get your artwork um, showing a little bit of that value. All right, guys, so grab those materials and let's get started. All right, guys, so we are going to start by drawing out our cake. Now, I am going to start mine by drawing with a pencil, and then I'm gonna trace over it with a Sharpie. If you have an eraser, you will want to go back and erase a couple parts because I am going to show you how to draw this piece of cake kind of broken down by using geometric shapes to start with. All right, so again, if you have an eraser, that's going to be useful in order to get your lines looking nice and neat before you go in or after you trace. All right, to start with our cake, like I said, we're going to break this down into geometric shapes. So we're gonna start with a rectangle, all right? I'm going to make this rectangle fairly large. I don't want it to go all the way to the top of the page because there is going to be a bit of space above this rectangle for our cake. It is going to be fairly wide. Um, you're going, oh, sorry, you can't see that. You're going to make this cake or this rectangle as wide as you want your piece of cake. All right, so my suggestion, don't go all the way to the edge, then it's gonna be hard to get a plate in this picture. But again, as large as, or as wide as you want your cake to be, it will be as wide as you make your rectangle. All right, close that rectangle up. And our first step is done. Now we're going to draw an oval at the top and at the bottom of our rectangle. This is going to give us a more cylinder type shape. So we want that oval to match perfectly up with the corners of our rectangle. So there's one at the top. And if you need to kind of adjust or erase, that's fine. And an oval at the bottom. As you can see, we have this cylinder shape. Eventually this line will be erased, but we wanna keep it there for right now. All right, now that we have that, the next step is we wanna find the center of our rectangle. So I'm gonna make a little dot kind of right there in the middle of my rectangle, and I'm going to draw a straight vertical line down to the bottom of my rectangle. Notice I'm only going to the bottom of the rectangle, not to the bottom of that oval. From here, we're going to draw a couple diagonal lines. Start at the point, so this is where that vertical line and the horizontal line of our rectangle meet in that kind of perpendicular right angle. And we're gonna draw two diagonal lines that make what look like a little triangle they're going to touch the bottom of our top oval, all right? Then we're going to do the same thing at the bottom of our cake, but instead of coming up to the top, they're going to, again, face down, point down to the bottom of our oval on the bottom. All right, once you've done that, our next step is to attach the two diagonal lines on each side together with a long vertical straight line. What we're making right now is the cutout of our cake. This is that slice that somebody has taken out of the cake. All right. Next, 
we're going to add the layers of our cake. When you make a cake that's nice and tall like this, it has multiple layers to it. That's where you've taken multiple pieces of cake and you've put icing in the middle to stick them together. That what's, that's what makes it so yummy. So to do that, we wanna make sure that we're using our line, making our lines at that same diagonal angle that the top and bottom of the cake is. Otherwise, it's going to make it look very flat and we want this to look three-dimensional, like it's sticking out at us. So, come a little ways down and you're gonna draw two diagonal lines on each side. Again, keeping them at the same angle that you did at the top. A little further down, draw two more. If two layers is all you can fit, that's fine. If you can fit a third layer in there, then by all means, go ahead, add that third layer. If you can do more than three layers, then go right ahead and add more than three layers. The next thing you're going to do is erase. Um, believe it or not, I don't have an eraser around here. So I'm going to actually trace over the lines that you're going to keep. Anything that I am not tracing, you're going to, going to want to erase. Now, if you would like to do this with me, you can go ahead and trace first and then erase afterwards. Um, and that way you're not erasing any of your extra lines and you can erase much faster. That's completely up to you. So I'm gonna start up here at the top and I'm going to trace over those two diagonal lines. Then around the oval at the top, that's the top of our cake. All right, and then I'm going to trace down the sides of that rectangle, that's down the side of our cake. Now, I'm only going, let's see, I'm gonna trace these diagonal lines that I drew, and then I'm going to trace the curved line that connects the side to that bottom piece. Notice I'm not tracing the rest of that oval. We don't wanna keep that. We are, however, going to trace that center vertical line and the two vertical lines we drew on either side. One, two. We're going to trace over our layers. And then that's it. Every other line that we still have is going to be erased. So I'm gonna find an eraser so that you can see what it should look like. All right, so I tracked down an eraser and erased all those extra lines so you can see our piece of cake starting to come together here. Now, we're gonna add some extra details. I'm going to add a little spatula cake um, server onto this artwork. I did not add one to this one, so if you don't want to, that is completely up to you. The details, the type of details that you add, again, completely up to you. So, if you would like to add a little cake spatula, cake server to this, then we're gonna come down here to the bottom and we're gonna start by drawing an oval. All right, so I've got my oval. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to draw two skinny curved lines. And then we're going to connect those with another curved line here. Then allowing this to overlap because this is kind of what is going to connect. This is the part, this is the handle. This is the part that connects the little spatula part together with the handle. We're going to allow this to overlap and we're going to draw kind of like a spade. It's going to look like a kind of curvy triangle. So I'm gonna come down here behind, widen it out, curve my lines, and bring it up to a point, slightly rounded point. All right. Then we're gonna add a little plate for our cake to sit on. And to do that, we're coming behind the cake. Again, we're using overlapping here. So our cake is going to overlap that plate so that it looks like it's sitting on it and not hovering above the plate. 
So we're gonna come up here, just about an inch or so up the length of our cake, and we're going to start to draw a curved line. If, like me, you chose to add this little cake server, if you hit that server, just stop and hop to the other side. We don't want to draw through it. Our, our little cake server is not going to be um, see-through. So, now you have your plate. The next thing we need is for our plate and cake to be sitting on a table. So we're gonna draw a horizontal line back here behind the cake. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and trace all of that. And if you happen to have any little spare lines that didn't quite get traced over perfectly, go ahead and just erase those. Like, whoop, I'm doing here. All right, so we have just the basic cake drawn. Now would be the time to add any details. Um, on my first one, I chose to draw candles. Um, it's completely up to you what you want to add to your cake. I'm gonna go ahead and add a few candles here. I'm gonna add them a little bit shorter because I did already trace mine. And to do those, all I did was draw a little rectangle with an oval at the top, a line for the wick, and then what looks like a little teardrop for the candle, or for the flame. All right, so our next step is going to be coloring. Now, coloring is completely up to you. You can choose to use any colors that you want. Um, the one thing I would like you guys to try and do is to add some value. Now. Remember, value is that change of a color from light to dark. And in order to add value to an artwork using crayons or pencils or anything like that, it's all about pressure. How much pressure are you adding to the crayon or the pencil, the drawing material you're using? The harder you press down, the darker your color is going to be. The lighter you press down or the less pressure that you apply with your hand, the lighter it's going to be. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the inside of my cake blue. And I'm going to start by just lightly coloring in each of these sections. Notice I'm not adding a whole lot of pressure. It's nice and light. I'm going to come back in a little bit and I'm going to add a little bit more pressure to make the inside closer to this kind of crease here. A little bit darker. Turn your paper however you need to to color. Again the colors you use completely up to you. Imagine what kind of cake you want, what you want it to look like, and choose your colors accordingly. Alright so now I have a nice light color blue on the interior of my cake. I want to make the insides here a little bit darker because as it comes in to the cake, there's going to be less light hitting and therefore there's gonna be a shadow. So I'm gonna come by and I'm going to make a nice dark line. By To do that, I'm just pressing down harder with my crayon. Then I'm gonna come out a little bit further but I'm not putting quite as much pressure with my hand. All right, so if you notice, I get still a dark color but not quite as dark as before. Each time I push down, I'm lifting up the pressure a little more and a little bit more. 
And what that's doing is it's creating this value effect that makes it look like a little shadow. I'm gonna do that for every single slice that I have, nice and dark in the center and slowly getting lighter as I come out until you get to the very end and we're just using that light value that I put down at the very beginning. If you're not comfortable with this, you could always choose a darker color of a crayon or pencil that you're using. So for instance, I'm using this kind of blue-green crayon. I could just choose to use the blue, which was would be a just a darker value of blue, and I could color the interior with that. Now I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna do the other side, same way, in order to show that value. Now as I do this, you're gonna kind of notice it looks like there's a shadow in the middle and it helps my artwork to look a little bit more three-dimensional. Now everything that we color on this, we want to add a little value to. That's going to help us keep our artwork looking three-dimensional the entire time. Now, I'm going to choose a color to make the kind of cream filling inside my little layers. I'm gonna to choose to use a complementary color of blue. Do you guys know what that is? That's right, it's orange. So I'm gonna come in with an orange. I'm gonna do it the same way. I'm gonna start with light, and then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna make that darker value. Again, just kind of creating that three-dimensional sense of value. Lightly put it down, come back with your darker value, slowly lifting the pressure off your hand as it comes out a little bit more. It's like an orange filling. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to color the outside of our cake. Now, we're going to add value to this, but we're going to do it in a slightly different way. Our value, our darker shadows are actually going to be on the outer edges and it's gonna become lighter in here. Because ultimately what we're looking at is our light source coming from the front of the cake versus the um, one of the sides, all right? So just like before, I'm going to just color lightly the entire cake. I'm gonna do the top of my cake a different color just to give some contrast. It's completely up to you how you color this. Remember coloring neatly. Um, it will look a lot better if you color all in the same direction. It just makes it look a little bit neater. Instead of going this way, that way while you're coloring, you're also going to find that you have a lot less little white spots that you have to fill in. Now I do like to kind of turn my crayon just to get around the edge, make sure I'm filling that in. Get the other side. Oops, see, and that's why I like to come down here, so I'm not going over those lines. All right, now how do we add value here? Okay, we're going to continue going vertically. So with my turn, I'm coloring horizontally, but as I turn my picture the correct way, you're gonna notice that I colored in a vertical um, direction. All right, there we go. Oops, there we go. So colored in a vertical direction. What I'm gonna do is on the outer edges, I'm gonna get that nice dark value by pushing down with my crayon harder and then slowly taking the pressure off as I come to the inside of that cake. So notice it slowly gets lighter. So I have my value over there, my shadow. Do the same thing on this side. Get my shadow on the edge. Lift the pressure off my crayon 
as I'm coming in. You can add value this way with colored pencils, with a regular color. Um, all that value is to make it darker or lighter is all in the pressure that you're adding to that drawing utensil. The only one that would really be different is with paint. Because with paint, you can't really change the pressure that you're applying. And so instead, you end up having to add white or black. All right, now I'm gonna come down here. I'm going to get the handle of my spatula. Now for this one, because it is rounded, I'm actually going to color with this kind of curved motion you can see me doing here. Kind of like drawing the letter C over and over and over again. Notice I'm consistently doing one color, one value. I've not added pressure anywhere yet. I'll do that in a little bit. Right now I'm just getting what we call that base color down. All right, now I'm gonna come by. I'm gonna create a slightly darker value on the bottom of that handle. So that the shadow is underneath and not on the top because the light would hit the top of this handle much easier than the bottom. Putting the bottom of our handle in a shadow. All right, so there is the handle. Notice it looks very rounded. That helps it make it look three dimensional. Now again, adding value, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do the spade. I'm gonna use gray and black for this. I'm going to start with black, getting my darkest value down here. Give a little shadow. Same thing around the edge here. Because again, the bottom is gonna be a slightly darker. And then I'm gonna come back in with just a gray crayon. All right, there's our spatula. You guys get to color everything else however you choose. My candle's up here, again, darker on one side, lighter on the other. Getting that value down. I'm gonna color the top of my cake. And then I'm going to design the background. Um, however you want that background kind of designed, you wanna add sprinkles on your cake, add it. The rest of this is completely up to you. So I'll show you what mine looks like when it's all done. I'm going to color the table and I'm gonna color the background of my artwork and I'll be right back. All right guys, so my finished product. As you can see, we have quite a bit of value in here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and that you are now able to draw lots of Wayne Tebow inspired cake. All right, I will see you guys next week.